Welcome to Model Horse TV. In this particular video, I decided to discuss some of the tools that you can use for prepping, a little bit about how these tools work, and also where you can purchase them. Um, the first thing I'd like to say, the three most important tools that you should have when you're going to prep um, is a hospital mask, safety goggles, and um, rubber gloves or latex gloves. Um, and I say this because when you prep, you deal with a lot of dust, and you also deal with a lot of harmful chemicals. So it's very important that you don't breathe this in, you don't get it in your eyes, and you also don't touch these chemicals with your hands and you protect yourself. Um, it's just good practice to make sure you protect yourself. These things you can get at Walmart, Target, um, your hardware store like Home Depot, Lowe's, um, Ace, uh, Sears, any of those places. Um, the masks are usually pretty inexpensive. Um, the goggles usually go for a few dollars, and I got a box of 50 sets of disposable gloves that were, I want to say, around five bucks. So please, please to protect yourself and get your safety materials first. Um, the first thing I start with with prepping, which is really inexpensive and works well, are sanding pads. And I say sanding pads as opposed to sandpaper because I find these are much more durable. They can take a lot more abuse. You can also cut them up and rip them up just as you would uh, regular sandpaper. So you can get in those hard to reach areas. And you can see some of these pads I've had forever and I can still use them. They, they clean off really easy. So they're a good investment. They're a little bit, sometimes a little bit more expensive than sanding, pad, uh, sanding paper, rather, but I still think it's a good investment. Um, the two that I use the most um, are the super fine and the fine. Um, the grit on these works really well for model horses because it's not going to gouge the plastic as some of the heavier grits will do. Um, this type of, this is a heavier grit here. This is, I believe, a medium. And this can cause deep gouges when you are prepping and sanding a model. So this I don't use for seams. This I use for heavy-duty things, um, sanding down areas where I've put filler. Um, so I'll show you a little bit about how the sanding pads work. These can be purchased at um, any of your local craft store. I, I bought mine at AC Moore. They were on clearance. Um, you can also buy them at Walmart. Um, and your hardware store as well. And they're they're a few dollars. I want to say they're around they're around two to three dollars a piece um, for your sanding pads. Um, the sanding pads I use um, on models that don't have seams that are too too heavy to deal with. Um, it's easy to tell where you still have to work. Um, and I'm using the fine right now. The 3M is great because they tell you what you're using on the back. Um, and you can get in here and you can sand down the areas with seams. It also works good for, you know, rough areas anywhere else on the body. And sands it right down and see where you have to work. And then I'll take my super fine pad and then I'll go over the areas that I was sanding because what it will do is it will smooth out any areas that might have left a little rough spot from sanding. So sanding pads are a great tool and they're very inexpensive. Um, Another thing you can use for prepping that a lot of people use are X-Acto knives. I do not use X-Acto knives because I'm bad with knives and I will cut myself. So I don't use them. I prefer to use the sanding pads and I also prefer to use a few other tools um, for seam removal. One of them, um, these were a little bit more expensive. These were around $10. I got these at the in the scrapbooking section, believe it or not, at AC Moore Arts and Crafts. Also try places like Michael's and your hardware store. They might have another precision file set such as this. This one has a group of all different types of files. I don't use um, the larger files because I find them a little too rough, but they will work for areas that you don't mind being a little rough with. Um, I tend to use the smaller ones here. As you can see, some of these are very well loved. Um, they have some great flat ones. They also have one that has a little um, like a hump to the top of it, which is good for getting in areas. And there's also one that is like a cube, and it's flat on all sides. And these are really great for getting in to some of those hard-to-reach areas, or if you don't want to use a sanding pad and you prefer to use some other method, and you can see here how you can go in and file down seams. Um, these also work really, really great for sanding off the logos on stable mate size model horses. 
Briar tends to put the logo on the stomach here and you can go in with these sanding pads and you can sand it right down um, with the files rather and then you can take your sanding pad on top of that and you get rid of it without using any heavy duty power tools. So this is a great little investment if you're able to find some really good files to use. Um, if you want to get a little bit more fancy and you know you're going to be doing a lot of prep work and you'd really like some high quality tools, I very, very much recommend the Rio Rondo Carbide Scrapers. I don't know how I lived without these when I used to prep. Um, this is what I use instead of X-Acto knives. It comes with the handle. It also comes in this great little case. Mine's loved so it's falling apart. Um, with all of the little tips that you can use here. My favorite is the number six. These are all numbered. They come like this from Rio Rondo. If you don't know how to use them and what they're used for, it's good to familiarize yourself with this great little booklet that they send you. It has all of the tips on it. So you can see um, what they look like, the number, and also the recommendations of what you can use these for. Um, you can use these again for seams and such. has a great little um, handle here so you can put your tip in it and then you can go in and you can scrape down those seams especially those seams that are really high some of the old models have some really really lousy seams and the number six is my favorite it just has this great these two flat edges and you can just go in and scrape the seam right off of these models these are also great um, for carving ears and for other areas. Again, familiarize yourself with the tips that are in here. Read the book and um, see what you can use these for. Um, they run for, I want to say, in the $50 range, so they're a little bit more expensive than the sanding pads and the files. But again, if you're going to be doing a lot of prepping, this is a very valuable set for you. You can find these at riorondo.com. Um, if you want to get into a little bit heavier stuff and you want to use some power tools, um, a wonderful thing to have is a Dremel tool. This is um, kind of like a rip-off Dremel tool that I got from a um, discount store in my area called the Christmas Tree Shops. This was a fraction of the cost of a Dremel tool. The Dremel tool is usually around, I want to say, in the $80 range for um, the basic um, um, Tool and then the case and some of the um, basic tips. Um, the three tips that I use the most, I use the sanding pad. This is a heavier weight sanding grit, so it is going to leave gouges, but it is absolutely great for shaving things off. Um, this horse had a mane that came down in a few spots on this side, and I didn't want that. I wanted a smooth neck, so I, um, I sanded it down, and um, I used that tool for it. So it's really great for shaving things off, especially manes and tails. Um, some more tools I use, which are great for ears. Um, this tool is great. It's a blunt tip sanding tool, and it's really wonderful to go in, um, like I did here with this um, foal, and I carved out the inside of the ears. I started to, rather. And um, it's nice because it's blunt, so it doesn't leave any horrible-looking um, marks inside the ear. This tool here that I have on the Dremel, on my Dremel tool is a um, sculpting tool. And it's got a sharp point. It is great for going in and doing some detail work. Um, the old molds, a lot of the times, the plastic is just, the ears are just like, it's this giant looking thing and it just goes right into the main. So I went in with this tool and I started carving down the ears and forming them to look like real ears instead of him having like uni ears. Um, so you can go in and do that. You can also use that tool, take a Sharpie marker, which is great to have around if you're going to use be carving and doing any um, detail work. Take your Sharpie marker, those you can get at any craft store and places like that, and go in. And a lot of these old molds, they lost a lot of detail. They've been done so many times. So I take my tool and I'll go in on this hoof here that's pretty much non-existent, and I'll take my Sharpie and I'll draw my line, and then I'll go in with that sculpting tool and I'll go in and make a line for a hoof. You can also do the same thing for the manes and tails that have lost all that detail. Take your marker, go in and draw where you want those hairs to be, and then take your sculpting tool and gently go in and um, get all these areas.